Good morning or perhaps afternoon for some of you. For, for some of you. People are still trickling. <clears throat> we'll maybe uh, wait for a few more minutes. As, uh, as you saw from a message from Anam this morning, we'll start with a small PowerPoint presentation and uh, we're gonna be mingling that presentation with the self introductions. Uh, some folks might be running a little behind, I think, when we're um, going to be in the later part of the presentations, most of the folks will be here. Um, so let's, let's get started. Um, thank you all very much for joining this kickoff meeting for, uh, for our Geospatial Fellows program. Um, and I think most of you uh, know me and I don't take any extra time for any self introduction. Uh, nice seeing all of you and uh, we're having folks from different circles. So we will need a, a round of uh, introductions uh, given everybody is on this uh, pretty busy Zoom screen that will take a little while and I will manage to do that uh, during, uh, during this meeting. Uh, and for the Geospatial Fellows, uh, hearty congratulations again. Uh, this is uh, going to be a fun and interesting year. We'll be uh, working together. And uh, for, for others, uh, we will get you uh, introduced to, to the Geospatial Fellows as, as we go. So uh, let, me, let me share the screen and uh, we'll start a short PowerPoint and uh, Again, as I mentioned in the middle of the uh, slideshow, we'll, we'll manage to get each other introduced. Uh, there will be a few more folks joining as, uh, as we go. Uh, before I get started, any, uh, any announcements or any questions? Uh, are you in the right Zoom at all? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so... Uh, Clearly, for for a group of this size, uh, it's a good idea to to take take some warm up. Uh, we'll we'll just do that through this uh, short PowerPoint presentation. Uh, let me share my screen then. Can you see my screen? Yes. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, very thrilled to uh, kick off our Geospatial Fellows program. And the link on the slide actually gets you to the list of fellows with uh, your awesome pictures you shared with us, as well as your project summaries and your short bios. So that's online. And uh, thanks to Colleen to mobilize uh, the communication machine of AAG, we're putting together a press release uh, we already have a draft. Uh, the draft is getting some final touches and will be shared with uh, your institutions, your uh, press contacts, uh, the fellows institutions, and uh, I'll be sharing a draft uh, in the next few days with all of you. And uh, it's likely your institutions will contact you to tailor your institutional press release uh, for the fellows program. Um, so thanks very much, Colleen, for uh, getting AAG's contributions to this. Uh, but uh, yeah, if you eyeball to, to that link, I could even click that link. You will 
this is the page. Uh, are you able to see my screen? Yes. Yeah, so this yes. is the fellows, fellows page. Um, coming back to my PowerPoint. Um, as I talked to uh, each and every one of the fellows, we shared what motivated this geospatial fellows activity is coming from the context of this NSF project for uh, conceptualizing a geospatial software institute as a long-term hub of excellence to serve diverse research and education communities as uh, you might have already recognized. Uh, you are coming from very diverse backgrounds and institutions and uh, your scholarly work. So there is a, uh, a draft of strategic plan, which is a key deliverable from this project to NSF coming from the consensus study as part of this project for NSF to understand about the feasibility of such an institute. Um, and the link will get you to a PDF. And this is not the final version of the strategic plan document. And in fact, this uh, fellowship program will help uh, continue to refine this strategic plan document uh, and, uh, and the process we're learning from each other will, will uh, help improve this uh, uh, strategic plan. Uh, the process works as uh, uh, after NSF will receive this strategic plan will be sometime late spring next year or in the summer next year, NSF will evaluate the strategic plan to make a decision as to whether to issue a solicitation for uh, a potential competition uh, for um, the community to respond to uh, developing a National Geospatial Software Institute. There's a, a Twitter hashtag uh, if you have any uh, thoughts or uh, interesting stories or activities you feel like are going to be uh, related or connected to uh, this in Denver, feel free uh, to engage your uh, social channels and, um, and, uh, and uh, post the Twitter messages, I guess. Uh, so the project, uh, the Geospatial Software Institute Conceptualization Project has a steering committee uh, and uh, this is perhaps a moment to introduce some of us on the steering committee. Um, and uh, as you know, uh, I'm Xiaowen uh, from University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. I'm gonna be calling uh, my old friend, not by age, uh, but uh, by the years of uh, our interactions, uh, Mike, uh, if you could uh, unmute yourself and uh, say a, a little bit about um, uh, about who you are, I'm sure you will not need any uh, introductions, but to just get some personal touch with everyone else. Sure. And so as Xiaowen said, I've been involved in the GSI project from the start, and um, it's been a very exciting project, but I think this new fellowship um, element is a really um, intriguing part of the Software Institute because it has the potential to really demonstrate uh, what we've been talking about as, as a plan for a geospatial software institute. So it's great to be here and great to be sharing in this. Thank you. Thanks very much, Mike. Um, I'll go next to uh, Anand. Thank you, Shawan. Uh, my name is Anand Padmanabhan. You have probably received emails from me now. So I serve as a project manager for this project and I'm a uh, research Associate Professor here at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign. Thanks, Anand. Thank uh, anybody else uh, on the steering committee now in the Zoom? I think Donna mentioned that she'll be here uh, later in the call. Uh, and I was hoping Dan might be here. Yeah, he but, had a conflict. Oh, he had a conflict, okay. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I think during the uh, entire project year, uh, we have together our time. You will get opportunities to meet with the, the other members of, uh, of the steering committee. We have been cultivating partnerships with uh, uh, a variety of players uh, on the academic side. Of course, uh, you already heard AAG stands for American Association of Geographers and uh, UCGIS. Uh, 
uh, which is a university consortium for geographic information science. These two partners, uh, we will have leaders and representatives from, um, from AAG and UCGS introduced later, uh, but also uh, a number of uh, government labs and uh, uh, entities uh, involved as well as industry uh, summarized on this slide. So I'm very delighted to uh, go to the next slide. Uh, so I mentioned uh, Colleen, uh, maybe to go next to Colleen to uh, uh, have, uh, have a, a introduction for others to, uh, to get to know you, um, Colleen. Yes, hi everyone, I'm uh, Colleen. I'm a senior geography researcher at the AAG. Uh, I've been there for about three years now. And um, I have participated in the GSI workshops, which uh, Xiao Wen has invited us um, since the beginning. Um, so I'm, I'm starting to become really familiar with uh, what the GSI stands for and uh, what the goals are. And I, um, uh, I really, truly appreciate this effort and the AAG is interested to continue partnership uh, uh, you somehow muted, Colleen. Did, I, did you hear nothing at all? Uh, I heard most, except for a few seconds. Uh, okay. Somehow, you, yeah. Um, so, uh, one of the focus of, of my engagement uh, here too will will also uh, focus on on ethics and and maybe start a bit of discussions about what implications geospatial data um, has on all of your projects and how to maybe think about uh, ethics um, or at least have discussions about that. So nice to meet all of you, and uh, I'm looking forward to all your great work. Thanks a lot, Colleen. Um, I think now go to the second row uh, of the, the photos here on this slide. I'll uh, ask, invite Ned, uh, maybe to uh, unmute yourself. Uh, Certainly. And... Thank you very much, Owen. Uh, very happy to be here. Uh, my name is Ned English. I'm a senior research methodologist at NORC at the University of Chicago, where we are known for doing large social science research studies essentially and so i'm here to represent as best i can the social science end of things i've uh, like colleen i've been involved with the gsi for about two years and i'm uh, very happy to hear more about uh, the individual fellows Sean? He might have oh. Thanks very much, Ned. Yeah. Uh, oh, thank uh, you. Sean, you're cutting out. Uh oh, we lost Shawen. I think we did lose Shawen, so he might <laughs> he might come back. Um, I, let's wait I, for a second. Okay. And, um, I think I have a version of the. I I uh, I'll introduce I think next, myself. Yeah, yep. exactly. There's <laughs> George. <laughs> there's George and Diana. So yeah. Yes. Yeah, I'm on, I'm on that lower row of pictures too. My name's Diana Sinton. I am the executive director of UCGIS. We are proud as an organization to have been working with Xiao Wen and um, all of the others working towards conceptualizing a GSI for a number of years now. We're grateful we've been able to do summer schools uh, with AAG and, uh, and the group at uh, Urbana-Champaign as well. And in every, any way that UCGIS can contribute to supporting this exciting work of the fellows right now, we're looking forward to it. Thanks Thank you. so much. Uh, yeah. I assume you were doing autopiloting while I was uh, dropped <laughs> <Exactly>. out. <laughs> yeah. My, my apology. Uh, got two uh, 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 active um, homeschoolers 
competing with me on the internet usage. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm sorry to, to get dropped out. Thanks, uh, Diana, for, um, for taking that over. Uh, can you see my screen now? Yes, Shelly. All right, thanks. <clears throat> Let's uh, move on. Yeah, uh, you heard uh, a few times now, we mentioned about this uh, potential National Geospatial Software Institute through uh, a multiple year community engagement process. We converged onto um, the mission for, uh, for National GSI uh, is to transform geospatial software, cyber infrastructure and data science across many fields to revolutionize diverse discovery and innovation by enhancing computational transparency and reproducibility. So I do want to read out this to you uh, because uh, quite a few folks spend quite a, a bit of time on um, wordsmithing this uh, into, into this form. Uh, again, this is still evolving, uh, room for improvement and for further, further debate, but that's the current version we have. Uh, and a vision is, is a shorter, is to um, establish a sustainable social and technical ecosystem to enable geospatial inspired innovation and discovery. Uh, there are now five goals uh, as, as our consensus, again, evolving, uh, but uh, the work you are gonna be contributing are gonna be uh, enhancing these goals or enhancing our understanding of such goals and refining these goals uh, in, our, uh, in, our, in our final strategic plan. And uh, you could capture, for instance, what uh, Colleen was uh, telling us about her focus in terms of ethical and open geospatial software, as well as a major focus for the geospatial fellows activities going to be uh, driving reproducible, transparent, and scalable geospatial software serving our uh, different uh, research and education purposes in the context of fighting COVID-19. Uh, just to highlight a few, um, few goals here, um, but uh, um, this slide deck will be shared with you shortly after this, uh, this Zoom meeting. Um, now, if you pull all this together, it's really this uh, a vertical integration uh, from the top, of course, uh, is uh, the importance of uh, critical spatial thinking guiding this um, innovation of uh, cyber infrastructure and geospatial software enabling the digital transformation from the bottom to up. And uh, we're sort of looking at this as a sandwich uh, in the middle stacked with um, geospatial data science and, uh, and cyber GS. You will learn a little bit more from the technical side today. Uh, and of course, the bottom is the rapid progress and advances of cyber infrastructure and, uh, and uh, computing in general. Uh, and uh, you know the top, uh, uh, from this sort of uh, integration perspective is a variety of science drivers and communities are really dependent on the advances of geospatial software and, uh, and data science to um, pursue what they need to um, accomplish in their sciences and research and education. Now translate, translate that integration uh, framework or uh, the general uh, illustration is uh, a more of a technical illustration. Uh, on this slide, uh, you have a variety of scientific drivers and communities coming from the top. And then you have examples such as uh, Exceed, which is a national uh, cyber infrastructure program supported by NSF and also a campus cyber infrastructure resource like Virtual Roger, a geospatial supercomputer. Uh, and how do you bring these resources together, making them accessible to a variety of scientific communities and, uh, and your own research in this particular geospatial fellows program. And uh, what's in between is uh, uh, multiple software modalities uh, developed in the cyber GS community, uh, how to democratize access to advanced but sophisticated cyber infrastructure resources through middleware and how to create algorithms that are scalable and natively capable of uh, harnessing uh, big data and the cyber infrastructure capabilities and how do you make such capabilities uh, directly accessible to um, scientists and the scholars and researchers who might not even be experts of GIS. So these software modalities are sort of uh, synthesized to serve different angles and purposes for, um, 
for scientific research and geospatial discovery and innovation. As a specific example, this is a, a pretty uh, complicated slide, uh, but the idea here is, uh, as you know, uh, Jupyter notebooks are getting uh, quite widely used as a data science tool. Uh, and the CyberGS, of course, is coming from geospatial science. So this marriage of CyberGS Jupyter is to uh, leverage the strength is from the two sides and to uh, make notebooks widely accessible to um, geospatial research and education, but it really um, having the power of cyber infrastructure underneath uh, such marriage for um, researchers and uh, educators to um, benefit from cyber infrastructure capabilities without having to deal with the sophisticated uh, technical details, uh, which is uh, the three columns you saw from this slide. We intend to have the browser to be uh, the easy entry to such sophisticated capabilities without overwhelming uh, researchers and educators for, for with it, what they need to do. Now, the Geospatial Fellows Program is going to help us specify requirements for geospatial hub to enable convergent uh, COVID-19 research and education. Uh, by geospatial hub, we meant to have a uh, integrated uh, user-centered environment with data and uh, CyberGS Jupyter notebooks as building blocks for, uh, for our collaborative research and education. So on this uh, platform, if time will permit, we'll have a short demo, uh, but if we don't have time today, we'll manage to uh, do a demo next time, which we will have a stronger focus on technical sharing. Uh, and you will see uh, notebooks uh, are gonna be uh, online, accessible through a browser, and uh, it's gonna be running directly on remote cyber infrastructure resources uh, and uh, be able to access uh, big data services. And all of this actually, uh, you know, our geospatial fellows and our users would not need to be concerned about the nitty gritty aspect, but rather focus on the concrete steps of a notebook, your scientific workflows. Uh, and uh, as you accomplish your workflows and you wanna share your progress and uh, get even peer reviewed, and this platform allows that sharing to um, take place. So key deliverables of uh, Geospatial Fellows, and I actually had the pleasure and privilege of uh, talking to each uh, of the fellows along these lines. Uh, so I'm not gonna go through these bullets in a detailed fashion, uh, but uh, number one, you'll be creating uh, CyberGS Jupyter Notebooks on the hub and, uh, and you will help specify what are the missing features and, and important requirements for uh, developing the hub into uh, a potential future capability for our uh, potential geospatial software institute. And uh, working together, we'll be writing a white paper addressing uh, the roadmap of geospatial software for advancing COVID-19 research and education. And this is gonna be uh, a quite a process because we need to learn from each other and then uh, we will also benefit from each other's research and education activities. And uh, specifically, we have identified four themes of our uh, fellowship contributions and uh, based on your uh, focus of, of your projects. So one theme is overarching uh, project from uh, Peter and Joe. Uh, they are looking at the um, computational reproducibility uh, and replicability of, uh, of COVID-19 research and education, particularly, of course, engaging a geospatial lens uh, in such computational reproducibility and replicability. Uh, so that's one theme of uh, our, uh, our fellows' uh, work. And, uh, and uh, as I'm going through this, now I'm uh, at a point to uh, really call uh, folks uh, on each of these slides, uh, because uh, it has your project details, at least not details, but your titles. Uh, but at, at the same time, be good to um, have uh, everyone else know you. Um, so for, for this part, uh, could I invite Peter and Joe to um, say a few words about yourself and, uh, 
and your interests and what you want to accomplish. Peter. Sure, I can jump in. Joe, do you mind if I go first? Go ahead. Okay. Uh, yeah, so Joe and I have been working on uh, reproducibility, replicability for a couple of years now. Joe, um, heavier on the teaching end of things, and myself, heavier on the conceptualization end of things. And when we saw this call, we saw it as an opportunity to potentially kind of suss out and to continue to develop some of these sort of like core aspects of reproducibility, replicability in uh, the geographic sciences, essentially. Um, so our project's a little bit strange, maybe, because we're not locked into one particular um, aspect of COVID-19, but really we're interested in sort of developing the frameworks and systems for doing reproducible research, um, particularly computationally reproducible research in this uh, case, um, in, in kind of the geographic realm, I suppose. So you'll be talking to both of us a bunch, I imagine, as we try to basically facilitate um, your projects being as reproducible as possible, while also sort of learning about um, what it means to do reproducible research in geography and how we basically make that happen um, more quickly and more efficiently. I can hand it to Joe here to maybe speak to the teaching aspects and elaborate on anything I said. Yeah, sure. Thank you, Peter. So my name is Joe Holler and I'm at an undergraduate uh, liberal arts college at Middlebury. And for several years now, I've been teaching an advanced uh, course in open, open source geographic information science. And as part of that course, I've been wanting to have students read contemporary cutting edge geospatial research and then learn how to conduct research by reproducing that. And in doing so, we kind of ran into all the barriers that everyone else does in terms of the lack of reproducibility in ge geosciences research. And so what we're, I think what Peter and I are really about is trying to work on creating a little ecosystem amongst the fellows where we increase the impact of the research that everyone is doing uh, by publishing it in a way that is more open and reproducible and transparent for policymakers and for students of GI science and spatial statistics. Thanks a lot, Peter and uh, Joe. Uh, you um, set very good examples for introducing uh, both yourselves and, uh, and your work. So moving on, the second theme is uh, Uh, is it really uh, centered on method fellowship projects simulation uh, similarly for fellows as well as uh, the titles of their projects and invite uh, is uh, clear start the introduction process here Sorry about that. Um, I'm Cleo Andrus. Um, I am doing, I'm working with the fire department in New York City to work on contract, contact tracing. Um, the fire department and EMS does a lot of work um, with responding to emergencies and they want to know more about how they can keep their over 10,000 workers safe from COVID. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Thanks, Cleo. Um, uh, next up is uh, Xiang. Hi, everyone. My name is Xiang Chen, and I'm an assistant professor in the University of Connecticut. And uh, so for this project, um, we are looking at a finer scale of COVID and trying to use an epidemic model to simulate the future cases on the community scale. Um, so we are looking at the town level or the county sub 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 Mm, county, county subdivision um, and for predicting the future of uh, outbreak. And uh, that's all. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Song Gao. Uh, I'm a assistant professor from University of Wisconsin-Madison. Uh, in this project, uh, we are looking at um, also the geospatial modeling of COVID-19 spread but uh, focused on uh, different um, geospatial scales. Uh, previously, we did that at a uh, uh, county scale. And also recently, we are focusing on uh, more local scale within each county or each city. 
uh, especially because the recent uh, surging of the cases uh, in Wisconsin. I think that uh, most of people heard of that. But uh, from a broader scope, uh, we have been actually um, uh, collecting and then processing and also releasing uh, several open open data sets using the uh, mobile phone data. So I think uh, I will introduce more detail uh, in future sessions. Uh, we hope that also this data set can be used by other fellows. And thank you. So that's my introduction. But sorry, I was muted. Um, I think Shavan dropped off again. Uh, so, but let's go on. I think, um, I guess you can see my screen, right? Yes. Okay. So um, I think next would be Daniel, uh, Dan Goldberg. I don't know if Dan is here. Dan, are you here? I didn't see him. Okay, so I guess we'll skip that, but Dan is a professor at um, Texas um, Tech and um, uh, he is working with a graduate student on doing spatial accessibility kind of research for COVID-19. Uh, anyway, so let's move on. Keenan, you are here, right? I saw you earlier. Uh, yes, I'm here. So hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Keenan Lee. Uh, I am a research scientist working at the Spatial Science Institute at USC. Uh, I have an environmental science background, and I work on a few uh, different projects on uh, environmental health. So in this project, I'll be working with Dr. John Wilson, who has a uh, meeting conflicts and won't be able to join today. Uh, we will be working on modeling the uh, epidemiology of, of COVID-19. Uh, through our preliminary analysis, uh, the direct connection with human mobility and the uh, epidemiology uh, trajectories of COVID-19 is not clear, and there are a lot of other confounders. And so in this study, we are focusing on uh, develop, developing a more spatial, uh, uh, more high spatial granularity model that directly calculates the contact rates uh, among the individuals and to, to, to study the impacts. Thank you, everyone. Very glad and honored to be here. Thank you, Keenan. And um, I guess next would be Shunshi. <coughs> Excuse me. Hi, hello everyone. My name is Xin Shi. I'm a professor of geography at Dharma's College. Um, I, my background is in GIS, but I have been working on geospatial analysis for health for, for years, for many years, in the, including cancer, children's environmental health, neurological diseases, and access to healthcare services. And about four years ago, I started to work on communicable diseases, and I have been mainly working on dengue fever uh, in China. And the approach I propose to this program, this fellow, uh, I think uh, has a lot of overlap with other, other fellows and is kind of different from the conventional epidemiological approach for modeling a disease that the SIR model, but follow better uh, what is going on in GIS field, like uh, especially the, the big data, individual level data trajectory, in the uh, contact tracing, that kind of thing. Um, I, I call it, I call it a bottom-up approach. This is different from the conventional top-down approach in epi epidemic modeling. Um, so this is a very, I think this is a very suitable approach to take advantage, to taking advantage of cyber GIS and the cyber infrastructure. And I actually, I have been uh, working on with Xiaowen and and then in the past uh, 10 years on an on and off basis, because uh, I've been trying to migrate a health GIS software package I developed called Arc Health to the cyber GIS infrastructure, but mainly because of my, my own read this program, they still have been under development. So it's on a, uh, it's not ongoing. And uh, I believe uh, what I propose to this program has a lot of overlap with other fellowships. And for example, I have been talking with Professor Song Gao at the University of Wisconsin-Madison 
talked about the data sharing and the program coding sharing issues. And I believe I will uh, have um, a lot of common language with other fellows in, in this program. And I'm very excited to work with, uh, have to have this opportunity to work with everyone. And in terms of education, I'm also looking forward to take all the input and feedback from everyone because I am going to teach a particular class called, uh, its title is called the Geography of Health and Disease, but but basically it's about the spatial analysis for, for health and disease class. This is, uh, we offer this class every once every year and that this will be taught the, again, uh, next in next spring term, we're starting from March, which are very good timings for me to take input from this program and uh, have something to to test or as a pilot to to the students in this class. So again, I'm very excited to have this opportunity to work with everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Shun. Um, and I guess we have Shawan back, so I release the slide to him. Shawan. My apologies again. My internet was not cooperating uh, this morning. So now you see the screen again, right? Yes. Awesome. Uh, thanks, Shun. Uh, that was a very, uh, very nice introduction. So the third theme of our fellows uh, activities is uh, impact. So uh, we have four uh, fellows contributing to the impact aspect. Uh, and uh, Andrew, uh, could you uh, start an introduction here? Absolutely. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Andrew Greenlee. I'm an associate professor in the Department of Urban and Regional Planning at University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. Um, my work uh, here is looking uh, particularly at the uh, the eviction crisis uh, that we're we're facing, and uh, so what I'm looking at here is to try to use a fairly novel source of um, household and individual level of data to be able to estimate where um, households facing eviction in the past have ended up relocating to. This is something that we know very little about. Uh, particularly um, in any uh, kind of uh, cross-sectional way. And then to use this to think about the massive backlog of evictions that, um, that uh, cities and, and counties throughout the U.S. are facing to start to predict where is it likely that households um, sitting in that backlog are likely to move to. And, and the, the real goal here is to, um, is to be able to glean information from this that will be useful for policy making and policy decision making at the local level to think about impacts on both origin and uh, destination neighborhoods. Thanks a lot, Andrew. Very, uh, very interesting. Uh, Naomi to go to go the next. Hi everyone, I'm Naomi Lazarus. I'm an assistant professor of geosciences at California State University in Chico. Um, I'll be looking at the causal impacts of age and comorbidities on underlying conditions on COVID-19. Um, I think we have, um, there is a gap in the information that we get in terms of cases and, and deaths across the country. And so my goal is to kind of tease out, you know, who's getting infected and where these hotspots hot are at the county level across the country. So that's, that would be the kind of the summary of the project that I will be doing for this fellowship. Thank you. Thank you greatly, uh, Nami. Uh, moving on, Ruby. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Ruby Mendenhall in sociology and African-American studies at the University of Illinois. And then I'm also assistant dean at the Carroll Illinois College of Medicine. And so my project is um, working with um, 50 to 100 young people um, and having them map out how COVID is affecting them in their community in terms of um, social networks, social relationships, how it's affecting them economically, whether it's their parents or other people in their um, network who may have lost jobs or as Andrew talked about be at risk for being evicted and then also to think about some solutions right so um, also not just kind of waiting for the tsunami of COVID deaths to um, come and hit especially black and brown communities but ways that um, they can make a difference and maybe part of that is through 
um, data visualization, infographics, um, pair, um, photographs about what's happening. And hopefully we plan to reach out to National Geographic to see if they would be interested in um, working with the young people as they um, produce knowledge about their communities and how they're being infect, um, affected by COVID-19. Thanks a lot, Ruby. Very, uh, very interesting uh, indeed. Um, so, uh, so next up, uh, Ni Tran. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Ni Tran Xiao. I'm professor of geography uh, at Ohio State University. Uh, for this fellowship, uh, I will be working with a student on um, human mobility. So, more specifically, um, I have been collecting. Um, traffic camera data since last year. So we have um, um, every, five, every five or 10 minutes. So um, we have a, a sort of a big data set and uh, it's a long term. Uh, hopefully uh, when we do this fellowship next year, we are going to see the, you know, the before, during and after part of the pandemic. Let's hope so. Um, so we are developing some um, uh, some algorithms to accurately identify vehicles, and from there, uh, we are um, we are going to uh, estimate the uh, OD matrix um, in a region around Central Ohio. So from there, we will associate that with the uh, social economic data. So uh, in order to understand how the uh, uh, how human mobility are affected. And uh, and uh, um, and uh, what are the uh, details of the uh, of the impact? So, for example, uh, can we ask the questions like, will the um, uh, big shopping malls be more uh, impact uh, be more affected than small business, right? So, uh, hopefully, we can find a, find a way to identify the areas with different types of um, businesses, and then we can analyze the impact of the pandemic on, on those. And maybe how about, you know, recovery? Uh, what kind of social economic background will affect the recovery and how that is associated with those other factors? So um, that's the uh, sort of the uh, um, a snapshot of the purpose of this project. Thank you. Thank you, Ning Tran. Uh, very, uh, very interesting, ambitious uh, undertaking. Um, yep. Uh, look forward to working together. So the fourth theme, theme of our fellows' activities and research uh, focused on social dimension. Uh, we have uh, three fellows uh, in this theme. Um, I'll start with um, Daniel. Hi, I'm uh, Danny Block at uh, Chicago State University. Um, I am um, uh, going to use this uh, fellowship to help me um, work on two food access uh, related projects uh, in the Chicago area that um, are very community oriented. So I, I'm part of um, two uh, multi-institutional um, consortiums surrounding the Chicago Food Policy Access Council, or Food Policy, sorry, Food Policy uh, Advisory Council. Um, both of which are working on, uh, one of which is working on uh, the effects of um, COVID and the, um, and the, uh, sort of looting protests that that followed um, on the food access situation within Chicago and Cook County, and sort of creating a, a sort of um, a, a up to date and easily uh, changeable food access map, which is something that has not been available in the Chicago area. Um, so easily updatable through both community and and uh, institutional updaters, uh, and the other project is looking at the possibility of building a, a local um, a system of local food producers surrounding Chicago, um, especially particularly with the equity focus. 
surrounding a, a new, um, in response to what's called the Good Food Purchasing Program, which is a, a policy that promotes uh, the buying of, of food, um, institutional food, food from uh, public institutions, um, along uh, based promoting uh, promoting the, the buying of local and um, ethically grown, I would just say, uh, food uh, by institutions. Um, so I'm hoping that this uh, fellowship will help me with the, both of those. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Daniel. Very, uh, very interesting, uh, certainly uh, in that context and, um, and a clearly a challenge for, um, for many communities to have um, decent food access in this in this crisis. Uh, Jay, um, could I invite you next? Sure. Uh, hi everyone, uh, I'm uh, Jay Chakraborty from the University of uh, Texas at El Paso and my project focuses on the unequal impacts of uh, COVID-19 for people with disabilities and it kind of connects to my previous research on uh, unequal exposure to environmental hazards, risks, and disasters with people in disabilities. And in this particular project, I'm, I guess the overarching goal is to examine uh, whether people with disabilities are overrepresented in communities that have higher, that have had higher COVID incidence and mortality rates. And I'm specifically interested in conducting uh, more of an intersectional analysis of, the, of this uh, disability category or kind of uh, disaggregating uh, disability status in terms of uh, both uh, the types of difficulty, vision, hearing, et cetera, as well as uh, social characteristics of people in this group uh, in terms of uh, age, race, ethnicity, poverty status, et cetera, to see if socially disadvantaged people with disabilities are facing higher exposure uh, to, uh, to this pandemic and its impact. And actually it's kind of a combination of uh, two projects, uh, first of which is kind of broad or national in scope. And the second part focuses on the greater Houston metropolitan area of Texas, uh, which was one of the hardest hit by uh, COVID-19 and also contains the highest number of people with disabilities in the state of Texas. That's it. Thanks a lot, Jay. Um, a very important topic uh, for sure. Uh, so next up, uh, Dao Qing, uh, could I invite you for an introduction? Hi, everybody. I'm uh, Dao Qing Tang. I'm a faculty member at the School of Geographic Sciences and Urban Planning, Arizona State University. I've been working on uh, spatial optimization and spatial analysis with applications in location analysis, transportation, public health. Uh, just in the past few years, I've been really interested in food access and food insecurity issues. So my fellow project will focus on use of geospatial data to examine uh, food access under the challenges uh, brought up about by uh, COVID-19. And in particular, whether and how the challenges would vary for different neighborhoods. Uh, so I'm really excited to be a part of the group and I look forward to working with you all. Thanks, Dao Qing. Uh, thanks so much, everyone, for um, for your very nice introductions. Uh, you know, I'm a wow, uh, certainly, you know, by uh, the very interesting ideas and uh, and also very important topics uh, you've uh, uh, you've you know put together into compelling proposals. Uh, so this is uh, sort of the ending point of uh, the introductions to all of the fellows and. Uh, and your fellowship projects. Uh, and you saw four themes we uh, categorized in a sort of a loosely coupled way for uh, our initial attempt to uh, foster collaborations and to get a sense uh, about how these different fellowship projects are related to each other. And then also connecting to uh, one of the key deliverables I mentioned, uh, we will be working together on a white paper and in this white paper, we'll need to slice and dice our ideas and contributions into, uh, into common themes and, uh, and try to connect dots. Now I'm gonna be uh, turning over to, uh, 
to Anand, uh, and uh, Anand going to be sharing with us some of our uh, program activities. Uh, most, uh, of course, uh, uh, relevantly is uh, the technical workshops going to be unfolded uh, next month. Uh, so Anand, could you um, help take over? Sure. Thank you, Shaman. Um, and thank you all the fellows for your nice introductions and the great project works you have proposed. So definitely, I guess um, our plan um, along with this week was to conduct like four weeks. So three weeks after this week of technical workshop and um, so that you get to understand the landscape that we are in and what are resources that might be available at the Cyber GIS Center or with the GSI project that you can potentially use and maybe uh, there are opportunities that can be identified for collaborations. Um, so next week we'll be introducing the platform for Cyber GIS X. Uh, we also have a where COVID-19 project, um, which uh, will introduce uh, a bit about that, as well as invite one of the fellows. I've already reached out to Song Gao and he has kindly agreed to uh, do this um, uh, presentation next week. So that would be kind of our main three themes for next week. Following that, we'll, we'll have a discussion on the ethical um, geospatial data use. Um, Colleen already talked about her interest there and uh, uh, try to motivate you in trying to use geospatial data ethically and uh, try to consider what are the um, potential ethical challenges about using geospatial data that we should keep in mind when we are doing research. So that would be a very important topic and that would apply to all the fellows. Um, then we'll be discussing about how to uh, use the libraries um, on CyberGSX and working with data. Some of you have big data needs. So trying to identify what are the data needs, what are your software needs and how we could work uh, within the CyberGSX platform to create like um, if that's kind of the right environment for you to do your research in. So that would be kind of a tool available to you guys um, to develop Jupyter Notebooks. Um, and um, so we'll be uh, seeing more about that. Uh, lastly, on the week four, um, we'll, be, we'll be having another fellow project introduction. Uh, I've yet to reach out to a fellow for that. And then we'll be um, talking about data visualization. How do you do um, many of the, your um, projects have Visual, visual components to it. So how would you do some visualization uh, within the uh, CyberGSX Jupyter environment? And some of you might be doing um, big computation uh, or computation on large data. So how do you use high performance computing or data intensive computing um, from within those platforms? So we'll be going a little bit more technical details. Um, so definitely for these workshops, I would, um, uh, encourage if you are working with students and um, things like uh, that, uh, I'm open to having your students also participate in that. So this would be um, important. So whoever is going to be working on this uh, platform, uh, it would be nice to have those people also involved in these uh, things. So next, thank you. Um, other than that, I guess um, after this four um, week process, we are hoping we'll have like a bi-weekly meetings that we would conduct with with your uh, with all of you, um, essentially trying to share progress, seeing if there are some roadblocks we could help with, just making sure that um, you can get peer feedbacks from each other. Many of you are working in common themes, so we'll have identify a uh, time for all of us to get together so we can have that kind of a discussion. Also, one of the goals which uh, key deliverables Shovan talked about was getting us feedback into introducing or into developing this geospatial hub. So um, this would be kind of the process for us to get the feedbacks, to improve the hub, to see how uh, we can make it better in order to, um, to better position it with your projects and um, better help your projects. So what are the technical needs you might have uh, from your project side, which can be uh, delivered by this hub. We will also have monthly webinars um, that we will start for the community. So this would be a larger community event, not just us fellows um, and the team here, but like widely publicized through AAG and through uh, UCGIS and other channels uh, for people to come in uh, external from the project and learn about what you are doing. 
So we'll be uh, identifying fellowship projects. You, you guys would be making some uh, webinar presentations talking about the progress made in the projects or the contributions that you are making and how it's uniquely positioned um, uh, and the research contributions and the educational contributions and how they might be used by others in the community or how they apply to others in the community. Uh, lastly, we will also be having uh, blogs uh, on Geospatial Hub. We'll invite uh, some of you might be prolific bloggers and would like to contribute a lot. Um, that That is definitely welcome. Some of you, uh, we would encourage you to blog maybe a couple of times um, during your fellowships. So so just generate like a uh, like an idea page of uh, what are things you are doing, maybe what are the um, cool things you might want to share with the community and with the fellows. So this would be a public blog which would be hosted. Um, Lastly, uh, we also have some resources which are available. So of course we have the, I mentioned the CyberGIS X platform that we have for developing, sharing Jupyter Notebooks. We'll go into technical details on how to, what does that mean, how to get accounts and all those nitty gritty details. But that's kind of a resource that you have. Um, we also have data resources that we have collected for, uh, I mentioned the VAR COVID-19 project. So we have been collecting some data resources related to COVID-19. Um, uh, for example, the New York Times data, the WHO data, and other data from Illinois. Um, so we, we can make all these data available within the platform so you can uh, access these data sets within the platform. And some of you might be having your own data set which you think might be um, useful for other fellows and which are open data set. We can host it in a shared environment, uh, but there might be some data set which are private. That is also, uh, we can also host these private data sets for you to do your work there. Uh, so that's kind of a data resources on the platform. And of course, the community hub, the geospatial hub that we will be developing in order to host and share your uh, research, uh, the notebooks, the educational materials that you are developing. Um, we also have access to uh, advanced cyber infrastructure resources provided by NSF Exceed. So this project, uh, we applied for an allocation and we received it um, to support basically your fellows, fellowship project. This of course supports the, um, the, the Jupyter Hub environment where you guys will be developing, but it also has computational support. So if you want to do some high performance computing, um, that would be something. And we have some GPU access on uh, bridges is one of the supercomputing um, uh, machines at, um, Pittsburgh Supercomputing Center, PSC, and, um, and Jetstream is a cloud kind of a resource um, on the Exceed uh, platform. So we have access to these national resources and we'll be um, well positioned to provide you access and to um, give you some access through the platform through directly. So, and also work with you if you have a need for your fellowships um, to go beyond what we have, for example, uh, if, you have, if you have to use exceed resources beyond the number of uh, SUs that we have, we'll be glad to work with you to develop some kind of proposals to, to, to go to exceed. Uh, and of course, we'll also have uh, technical consultations provided by the CyberGIS Center, by me and uh, all the, um, the wonderful graduate students and uh, staff that we have at the CyberGIS Center. So that's kind of the access to the resources that you have um, anything else, I guess? Um, Maybe, uh, Anand, uh, yeah. thanks so much. That's a, a nice uh, summary uh, we should perhaps introduce as a good segue to uh, the folks in the Zoom, not yet introduced, uh, but uh, I think a majority is uh, the folks from the CyberGS Center. Right. Uh, if you could call them uh, and sure. invite them to uh, to introduce themselves uh, briefly. Sure. Uh, um, yeah. So for, for the fellows to know them directly. Yep. That's that's wonderful idea, Shogun. So I guess first I'll go with Becky Wonderwale. She's a graduate student here. Becky, can you unmute yourself? Hi. Uh, um, so yeah, I'm a, I'm a grad student in um, in Shawan's lab. Um, I'm helping to facilitate the program, uh, working with Anand directly for that. Um, so if anyone has kind of general questions, I can help and you might see me emailing about, um, but I'll also be helping with um, various presentations. So you'll probably see me around. Thank you. Thank you, Becky. 
And I guess we also have uh, Suhan joining us. Suhan, can you introduce yourself? Hi, uh, I'm Suhan. I'm, I'm doing research with Xiaowen. And uh, in terms of the COVID-19, I have uh, I have been doing two uh, research. And the first one is to, I developed some fiber JST enabled uh, uh, visual analytics system that helps the like uh, researchers, like users to identify the neighborhood that's vulnerable to COVID-19. And also another, another research, I'm also working with the uh, human mobility, uh, human mobility uh, in terms of the uh, in relation to the human movements during the COVID-19 outbreak. Thank you, Sue. Uh, I think that's all we have of people who have not introduced. Did I miss anyone? Okay, if anyone has not introduced themselves, please feel free to do so right now. Okay, I think Shavan, back to you. All right, thanks a lot. So uh, we actually uh, conceptualized this geospatial fellows program out of a summer school experience we had 2019. Uh, my sense of time got uh, actually terribly distorted. This was uh, 2019, uh, only effectively just uh, a little bit more than a year ago, but it felt like this was like a last century thing, uh, but anyhow. The picture here is on the campus of uh, UIUC and uh, the group is uh, the summer school participants. Uh, after a very hard working week, uh, this is the feeling of everyone. So our goal is to get you like this after a year. So we have a much longer process, but in the end, our aspirations to, um, to get everyone um, as excited as, as possible and also really to um, have everyone in the fellows program to um, have a sense of team and uh, really to help each other and uh, to uh, build on each other's work and achieve something individually we might be limited uh, by whatever factors we have to face. So, um, so with that, uh, I wanna quickly acknowledge the red color highlight uh, uh, grant is the Geospatial Software Institute uh, Conceptualization Award from uh, NSF. And I would also wanna thank our partners uh, for, for their contributions and uh, you know, for, for their interest in this, uh, I would say amazing program. Uh, I am certainly uh, very privileged to uh, have this opportunity to interact with all the fellows and all the wonderful folks from, uh, from our uh, partners as well as uh, our senior scholars on the GSI uh, project team. Uh, you got two emails. Uh, I think that would be, uh, at least in my mind, the most effective way of, uh, of getting uh, things uh, started and uh, getting things resolved. Uh, that's my email and Anand's email. Um, so we do try to respond to you as uh, promptly as, as possible. Uh, but we also have mailing list. Uh, you've already been registered into the Geospatial uh, Fellows mailing list. Uh, we'll have blogs as Anand mentioned. Uh, so you'll have uh, a number of uh, uh, access points to uh, get connected with each other. And uh, if you have any additional uh, needs and uh, have suggestions for us to uh, work together more effectively, feel free to reach out to us and use the mailing list to discuss what are other options. That's everything. Uh, as a slide deck, I mentioned, uh, we wanna leverage to just get folks uh, introduced to each other. Um, we actually used up all of our time not surprisingly, uh, the uh, slide deck will be available to you uh, later today uh, so that you could see what we've gone through and uh, maybe some folks' names uh, you uh, did not necessarily remember. Uh, that would be a good way to, uh, to, uh, to have, uh, have, a, have the slide deck available for you. So I guess I'll open the floor here. Uh, see if any questions you might have. Uh, I'll, be, uh, I'll be here uh, for a little longer. And 
but feel free to leave uh, because uh, we only scheduled this meeting for an hour. Uh, but any questions, comments, clarifications, uh, I'll be happy to uh, to take. And uh, and Anand maybe could also uh, stay in here a little longer yeah. as well. Any questions? Uh, on the logistical side, I've uh, discussed individually with everyone, the fellows, uh, you know, your, your budget, your project plans. Uh, so once in October, we'll start executing those logistics uh, and, uh, you know, getting our uh, money um, uh, allocated to, um, to your side, however we decided is it the best way. Uh, and uh, so that will be uh, that will be happening. Some cases might be more complicated than uh, than the majority, but uh, for the majority, I expect uh, October should be enough to uh, get the the logistics uh, sorted out for most of the the fellowship projects. Shawan uh, and Arnan, this is Shinshi from Dharma's College, and I have a maybe a. A quick question about the, the frequency of the activities or events, because I see from your slides, we have all sorts of activities or events. We have workshops, we have uh, meetings, we have webinars, we have something else. So um, can you give us a kind of a idea how frequent are we going to say every week we are going to have something to do or every two weeks we have something to do or yeah. Yeah, uh, that's a good question. Uh, it'd be good to clarify. For the first month, uh, because uh, of the uh, need to get people familiar with the technical side of our collaborations, so we uh, made this uh, pretty intense. Uh, and uh, I think if uh, you might have your research team members, grad students, uh, more focused on the technical work. They could be attending these technical workshops. If uh, you have time conflict, you um, might be excused not to, uh, to attend this, this workshop. So the, I think the importance is uh, uh, whoever your team members are actually doing the technical work, they might need to be attending this, these workshops. After October, uh, the uh, expectation is initially we will be running our meetings to expect most of the fellows to attend be uh, once every two weeks. Uh, that would sort of get us reflect on the technical aspects, you know, how uh, easy uh, this would become for, for us to get our hands dirty and rolling up sleeves. Uh, after maybe November, we will have like two um, collaboration meetings, you know, Zoom meetings. From there, we need to decide together how frequently we want to get together. Uh, I don't want to have a heavy toe on people's busy calendars and schedules. But at the same time, we also want to be uh, available as as much as we can to each other and particularly uh, the Illinois folks want to be available for uh, for assisting the fellows to um, uh, get the ball uh, lifted off the ground uh, actually uh, you know executing your fellowship projects. Now another uh, element of our uh, fellowship activities is a webinar. Uh, that is uh, going to be monthly uh, on average meaning we, as we learn more about each other, we will decide which fellowship project might be worth uh, highlighting at the right time, uh, depending on the maturity of your projects and also uh, our partners' interests, uh, because we will be working with our partners to highlight your work, right? One of the motivations of the fellowship program is to you know, promote uh, pr promote your work and increase the visibility of, of our work collectively. Uh, so that will be that will be monthly, and uh, in the next few months, we'll be working with you to come up with a schedule of webinars, uh, and uh, and depending upon 
folks availability and uh, for the webinars it would be nice to have a majority of the fellows to attend but it you know it's uh, going to be hard to schedule everyone to attend every webinar so uh, so based on your interest and availability you know uh, you could decide which one to take and uh, and uh, and you could also uh, chime in to see um, which a webinar you want to host as a as a presenter. Uh, now, one thing we did not mention was, uh, which I did discuss with uh, all of you uh, when we had our individual uh, meetings. Uh, toward the end of this fellowship program, we want to get together, right? We uh, want to have a workshop. Uh, if uh, safety at that time will not be a concern, this will be likely in the summer next year. And uh, we actually wanted to get together face to face if, if safety will not be a problem uh, by that time. Uh, but uh, of course, fingers crossed, we don't know yet. It's too early to tell. Uh, so there, there might be a face to face workshop. Uh, and uh, I tend to uh, be positive NSF would give us additional resources to bring people together uh, if needed. Uh, but uh, if that would not be possible, we will try to do this via Zoom. Um, and uh, that will be sort of a, a concluding uh, event to wrap up our um, fellowship program. Um, again, we're completely open-minded. Uh, I've, as I mentioned to uh, all of the fellows, I've not had uh, an experience like this uh, in the past, working with uh, collaborators on Zoom for a year, I, this is not something I did in the past. <laughs> so it's the first time. I would very much welcome your advice, suggestions as to how to you know, work together, having fun, I think number one and most important. Uh, at the same time, of course, you benefit from each other's intellectual power. Uh, so uh, any suggestions, advice, uh, we're completely open-minded to, uh, uh, to improve this as we go, but also to, uh, to do something uh, unconventional and then, um, you know, help each other get most uh, out of this um, uh, very, I think, cool activity. Um, I've been thinking of this for a while, so I'm certainly biased, but I, I, I think we're, we're really embarking on something uh, very, um, uh, potentially impactful. Well, at least I think we it's much easier to have meetings now. <laughs> <laughs> I have much more meetings than before. Uh, but uh, I, I do understand and appreciate uh, people are heavily taxed, uh, taxed by Zoom. Uh, these days, Zoom fatigue and, uh, uh, you know, eyeballs and uh, even uh, translate to mental uh, part it's uh, it's it's not a it's not an easy thing uh, i'm very mindful of uh, of calling zoom meetings uh, and i would uh, definitely want to make our meetings as uh, as efficient and also as uh, informative as possible so that you feel like oh you know i can't wait i cannot wait to join this meeting <laughs> as opposed to say, oh my goodness, there's another Zoom meeting, I have to show up. So let's hope to avoid the latter uh, to, to the best degree we can. Uh, and of course, uh, everybody's schedule is dynamic. If you really have conflicts, uh, you know, once in a while, uh, uh, don't, don't feel like you are, uh, you are uh, absolutely uh, locked to this. Um, so, uh, so we'll help each other in any way or form, form or shape to, uh, to move together as a, as a strong team. Any uh, other questions? Um, any final words? I'll say uh, one thing. So I, I will talk to you later this month, or it's not October yet, but later in October, 
I will talk to you about ethics. Um, I can't say that I'm an expert in ethics, but these are conversations that definitely need to have had among this community. If you already want to start this conversation, uh, the AAG has a participatory forum organized uh, on Thursday. I'm uh, linking it here in the chat box. Um, just like Xiaowen was saying, the AG also doesn't have a great um, background in offering all sorts of ways of connecting our members through online. So we are um, experimenting with all sorts of formats and ways to have conversations online. So this participatory forum is something that we are trying. Um, this will not be a panel discussion with experts in the front telling you uh, what the solutions are. Um, and the primary goal of this forum is to have discussions among the audience that joins. So if you're interested to participate, you are all welcome to register and uh, that's it. Yeah, I was aware of this uh, particular effort. I think it's uh, very uh, interesting and potentially uh, a big help for, for driving this important topic forward. Um, so yeah, I would encourage the fellows to watch this and uh, if possible, contribute. Yeah, and if you can't participate, this, the thoughts that come out of this forum will definitely be shared back to all of you uh, late October. Any uh, other final words? Uh, Mike, you are muted. Um, we're going to be wrapping up this meeting. Do you, uh, do you have any uh, wisdom and uh, advice? <laughs> um, no, I, I don't think so. I think it's been a very a very wise set of uh, set of interactions. Um, it's it's great to see this happening, and uh, I just want to reiterate what um, Colleen just said about the ethical implications because I think they are um, quite significant. Um, we are working under a great deal of pressure in this COVID nineteen area, and there's a lot of work going on, um, and. Uh, the traditions of science, which are, of course, all about peer review and replicability, which is what Peter Kedrin has been talking about. Uh, all of those are tremendously important um, in this era of rapid research. And I, I think it'd be great if, if the net effect of this was to make research uh, more reactive and more speedy. But there are a lot of concerns along the way that um, I think it's very important to deal with. Yeah, hopefully uh, this unique collaboration will help us capture those concerns more clearly and uh, communicate those concerns to broader communities, leveraging uh, the work that we've already conducted in the, the, in the GISI context. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, um, again, uh, thank you so much. Uh, I very much look forward to uh, working with all of you and uh, working with um, within this unique collaboration for for the coming year uh, but uh, you know of course uh, number one everyone um, stay uh, healthy and safe uh, and uh, take care of uh, of yourself and uh, loved ones uh, because uh, this is a very uh, very uh, uncertain time you know you know higher at environment we're facing. Uh, so that's, I think, something I try to keep in mind all the time is, uh, you know, you would have a lot of stressors and, uh, you know, besides this, um, I would say very exciting collaboration. There are many things going on in each and every one of our lives. Um, so keep in mind, uh, we're here to work together, but also we're here to help each other. Uh, even beyond the fellowships program. Uh, if you have any challenges uh, you need to, uh, to share, uh, I'm always here to listen and, uh, and uh, I'm 
also positive as we know more each other. If there are ways we could uh, help each other beyond our scholarly work and we need to be uh, behind each other, don't, don't hesitate to reach out to me. So I, I think with that, uh, we, should, uh, we should adjourn and um, uh, many thanks for, uh, for your time and uh, for, for the wonderful work you are, um, you are pursuing. Um, so let's, let's stay in touch. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Talk to you Thank soon. You. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye -bye. See you next week. See ya. Bye. Thanks, Colleen. Okay. All right. Thank you, Sean. Uh, yeah, I think we should adjourn, but uh, uh, this afternoon I might find a time to get together about our um, CSSI proposal. Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. But anyhow, so this boys is rolling and um, it should yep. be a lot of fun. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.